Good morning, Restore Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Can you believe it's the second Saturday, second Sunday, excuse me, second Sunday in October. We usually celebrate our Pastor Appreciation Day on this Sunday. So, hey, shout out to Pastor Tim and Pastor Carlene and send them greets right now. But you know what? If you can't do it today, it's the whole month. It's Pastor Appreciation Month. So go ahead, Alex. We'll start it. And, hey, join Lifestyle. Kelly and I <laughs> in worshiping and praising the Lord this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, praising you, stars above, galaxies all in motion, praising you, thunder clouds, ringing throughout the Praise Him forever, let all that is within me magnify His name. Great is the Lord our God, praise Him forever. Join in the sound of heaven from every mountain top to every wild ocean. Oh, hear all the universe sing praise. Oh, sing praise. Let everything that breathes, let all the earth proclaim. Great is the Lord our God, praise Him forever. Let all that is within me magnify His name. Great is the Lord our God, praise Him forever.
because he alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, we're going to keep praising the Lord. So join us as we sing another praise and worship song unto him. Come on. Woo, give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, God. Oh, we praise you, Lord. You are worthy. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Here's my weapon here, my praise. Hallelujah. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. You sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are when we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. The giants fall, for fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, oh. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Come on, let your faith arise. Hallelujah. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, oh, oh. we praise you. Oh, Right now, if you just lift up your weapon of praise, the enemy will not defeat you. Come on, you already have the victory. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh. Amen. 
We serve a God that breaks down every wall, that breaks up every chain, that's able to do exceeding and abundantly above what we can ask or even think according to his mighty power that works in us. And that's the great thing is that his mighty power isn't just out there somewhere in the universe, but the Bible tells it, it tells us rather that it works in us. The power of God is in us yes. <laughs> to do a work in us, through us, for us. God is an awesome God, and God is able to do great and amazing things. And when we lift him up in praise and when we magnify his name, we're praising him for his mighty acts. We're praising him for his goodness, for his mercy. We're praising him for all of the wonderful things that he does and the wonderful God that he is. But that God, (laughs) that same God that that does miracles is the same God that moves and works in us, in our hearts, in our lives. And he is here today to move and work on your behalf. So whatever your need, whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation, whatever your obstacle, whatever your opposition, we are here proclaiming a God that is bigger than, that is stronger than, that is greater than any of those things that may be coming against you or that you're facing in your life experience right now. And we are here to pray. We're here to agree with you. We're here to pray with you. We're here to confess a good confession over your life and over your situation and over your family. And so if you have a need right now, as you see on the bottom of the screen, just send that request in. Just message us. We are here to pray and we will pray and agree with you right now. And so Lifestyle Light, which is Shalito and Kelly, are going to join me in prayer. In fact, the whole team that's in the house today is going to join me in prayer and we're going to agree for you and we're going to agree with you that God does great things, miraculous things, amazing things on your behalf right now. Let's pray. Let's agree together. Lord, we, we just look to you because you, Lord God, are the God of great things. You, Lord God, are the God of mighty miracles. You, Lord God, are able to make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. And so we are coming to you on behalf of every request and every petition of every individual that's watching this broadcast right now, whatever their situation is, whatever their need is, whatever the circumstance is, Lord, we know you are bigger, you're greater, you're stronger, you're mightier, and we just turn it over to you right now. We're tired of hanging on to it. We need to let it go. We need to give it up. We need to turn it over to you. So right now, Lord God, we're just asking you to do your will and have your way in each and every heart right now, each and every life right now, each and every request right now. We just ask your perfect will to be done. And we will give you the praise and we will give you the glory and we will bless your name for all the great things that you do as a result. Lord, thank you for hearing and answering our prayer today. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes right now, in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout it out with me and say, amen. Amen. (laughs) Oh, come on, somebody. You can do better than that. Can I get an amen out there? We're believing God for all that he has to do. Hey, he's a great, great, great God. And I'm so thankful we're serving him. Let's continue to lift up the name of the Lord. We're going to ratchet it down just a little bit and uh, just give glory to God and worship him again. So let's do that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, whatever you're going through, you can run to our Father. He's ready with open arms to receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, just run to your father. Hallelujah. Carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. 
alone. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now. I'm laying it down. And I know that I need you. I run to the Father. I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh. that song so much run to the father again you know that that's really what grace is all about man we can just we can just run to the lord again and again and again and i don't know about you but i know i access him time and again and again and again over and over and over again because i need the lord i need the lord every single day every single moment in uh, so many situations of life and circumstances we need to recognize that we can run to him and that we can look to him and that he is there for us. Thank you, Jesus. 
That's awesome. Thank you, Lifestyle. We appreciate that so much, lifting us into the presence of the Lord today. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And so we experience that and have that with us here today. Now, as you may have noticed, we are missing one of the integral parts of our worship service, and that would be none other than my wife, Carlene. But she is watching right now from Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, babe, can give us a wave and give us a shout out and, uh, and just give us a hey, hey online in the comments section. <laughs> we miss you, and uh, we're, we're praying for you and uh, your family, and we're just believing that God is on the throne and in control. We know that he is, but we miss you, and uh, looking forward to seeing you back. She's been gone for quite a few days now, but uh, we, we just wanted to give her a shout out. Anyway, well, it's great to be with you again, each and every one of you that are online. Hey, if you've given us a shout out and let us know you're watching, that's awesome because we have another guest with us uh, from kind of far away, yeah, the other side of the world. Actually, it's my good friend, Pastor Prim from India, has joined us for this service today, and so I wanted him to come on camera and give, you, give him a hello and a shout out. So good to have you. Good to see Thank you. you. Sir. Glad you were actually able to make it. It's been right, over a right. year since we saw him last and uh, that he was able to get back and, and he's back here with us. And so just uh, tell Restore Church family a hello, hello or Restore whatever. Hello Church, how are you? <laughs> um, thank you Pastor uh, for uh, giving me space to stay. And uh, thank you Restore Church for uh, um, helping Spirit and Life Ministries back at home. I bring greetings and uh, thank you very much for helping the people over there. Uh, your church uh, really helped us uh, uh, in the crisis, and uh, God bless you, and God use you mightily. And uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, helping uh, uh, me to stay, uh, and uh, I'm really happy to uh, participate in this service. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Prim. That's awesome. And uh, we do support Spirit and Life Ministries in India and the work that they're doing. And uh, so when you, when you give to missions at Cornerstone, that's one of the places it's going to right there. So uh, I, I said Cornerstone, didn't I? <laughs> Cornerstone slash Restored Church. You know, here we go again with that. But we know that's going to be a continual battle uh, as we journey onward. But we're excited also about another one of the missions outreaches that we're involved in this year, which is Operation Christmas Child. And it's, it's run through Samaritan's Purse. And coordinating that effort is Kelly Sepulveda. And we're going we're gonna to have Kelly join us on camera in just a minute. But what this is, is an opportunity to put together a box of of supplies, uh, toys, different needs for children in underprivileged parts of the world, undeveloped world, and all around the world this, this program goes and reaches, and it's great to be a part of it. So Kelly, come on in once again, and this is Kelly Sepulveda, and she is the Missions Outreach Coordinator here for this wonderful program. And I just got to tell you, the other day, um, Zachary and I went to Chick-fil-A, and so we're in line at Chick-fil-A, and, and, and Zach, uh, and it was a long line, actually. We we're getting dinner at Chick-fil-A. And so um, Zach said, look, Dad, look over there. And they have this big tent up, and they were promoting this program at Chick-fil-A when we went through and they were they were asking everybody if they'd like to sponsor a child and and build a box and give it and if they did they'd get a free sandwich that day and all kind of cool stuff so i was like they, they came and asked us at our car and i said well we're already doing this at our church but we we certainly do support the program and we're excited to see that you're supporting it also and pushing it so mm -hmm. Tell us a little more today about what you're... So today, I just want to share, um, it's been going over my mind and, you know, 
the effect that this is having. So right. when we when we give as a church body, um, we're not just giving in this small small space. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it correctly, but our our gift of this small box that costs maybe twenty five dollars. If you get good deals at Walmart, you get it cheaper probably. <laughs> but this small gift has an exponential effect. So we're not we're not just affecting one person. So for example, this next video, this young man, he was saved very young and he witnessed to his whole neighborhood and it had an effect on, you know, building another church. So it's a great um, opportunity to really be a witness in the gift that you give, the love that you share. Um, and it just has a great effect. It's not just one person, but it's many people. You know, you don't know how many people you're going to affect by this one little gift. And the more you give, the greater effect. So it, it gets kind of addictive. I can tell you that I'm already addicted. <laughs> so whenever you go to the store, you see little things, you're like, oh, I could put that in the box. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Sales are really good, especially we have sales coming up. That's right. So take a look at this video and just be blessed by this story that um, this young man gives. Yeah, this is going to encourage you. Check this out. Hi, everybody. My name is Desiree Nana, and I come from Burkina Faso, West Africa. I was born in one of the poor countries around the world, in the big family with seven kids. So I remember working every day to go to school without lunch most of the time because my parents couldn't provide enough food for all of us. So receiving the shoebox at eight years old, like has my first gift, was a really blessing for me. I didn't expect anybody to give me a gift. I didn't, I was thinking that really somebody cared about me. So it was really great to receive a gift for somebody that I don't even know. I still remember this Saturday morning that I received my shoebox. But before giving the shoebox, they were making the gospel presentation. And I was just so excited to opening the shoebox and see what is inside. So I went home. And when I opened the shoebox, it was just full of love of goodies. I have cool supplies, I have toys, and I have books. And I really enjoy also my yo-yo. And actually it was like a special yo-yo because in the night, we just light up in my dark neighborhood. So God has been so faithful to me. And I was just so happy to have a gift for myself. A few years later, God was taking me in another greater journey that I didn't expect. At 12 years old, I started kids ministry in my neighborhood and I have opportunity to share the love of God with many kids in my neighborhood and many villages in my country. I also have opportunity to serve with Operation Trishmas Child. So I've been going in several villages, have opportunity to teach the discipleship program, the greatest journey to many kids and also have opportunity to see nine churches planting. So thank you so much for packing shoebox. Thank you for praying for kids to become a disciple and a disciple maker like me. Wow, isn't that a cool story? Desiree's story. And that, that's what we're talking about. You're thinking, well, you know, I'm just doing this one little thing. And here this one box to this one child not only changed their life, but changed the trajectory of their life and not only impacted them, but look what it's done as a result. Now he's grown up and now he's discipled hundreds of children and has started nine different churches. Come on, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. This is somebody whose life was changed by this one act. And so this is an incredible opportunity for you to get involved in. And, and that's why Kelly's so passionate about it. And we're so passionate about it. And we were just so excited to see Chick-fil-A even passionate about it. Because this is an important program, reaching children all around the world, especially right now. Avail yourselves of this incredible outreach opportunity and the chance to make a huge difference, not just in one life, but 
in no telling. Like Kelly said a few minutes ago, it's exponential. The, the opportunities just can continue to go on and on and on. No telling how many people can be blessed by your action. So please be a blessing and please give. Well, that's what it's all about today. It's all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and that, that's kind of leading into what I want to talk to you about today and what I wanted to share, what was on my heart. Because what I wanted to share with you today is fixing your focus. And I thought when Kelly was sharing with me what, what uh, video they were going to be showing and we were going to be talking about, I was like, wow, this is, this is kind of uh, what it's all about. Because I'm talking today about fixing your focus. And I think especially in this hour that we live in, especially with everything that's going on politically and uh, culturally and racially and all of these issues that the challenges that have been facing, not just America, but challenges that have been going on globally. I, I thought, man, this is a great opportunity for us to really center ourselves and recognize that we need to fix our focus. And so I want to talk to you about that for the next couple of minutes of your time today. I'm going to go to the book of Hebrews, and I'm going to start in Hebrews chapter number 12. And I want to read three verses in the beginning of Hebrews chapter number 12. Now, Hebrews chapter number 12 really continues on from where Hebrews 11 left off, obviously, but, but what it was talking about is really what's important, and it was talking about all the heroes of the faith, all of the heroes of the Bible, all the people that, that did exploits, that loved God, that followed God, that were faithful to God, and they had moments of challenge and moments of weakness and moments of difficulty, but yet they were still faithful. And all this list, you know, from Abraham on down, we see all of these different heroes of the faith. And then the writer goes on to say this and begins, which, which begins our chapter number 12. But it was just a letter to the Hebrews. So it was, you know, just continuing on the next paragraph. Well, this is the next paragraph. And I want to read it from the God's Word translation today. And this is what it says, verse number one, since we are surrounded by so many examples of faith, we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially sin that distracts us. We must run the race that lies ahead of us and never give up. That's a good word. Let's go on to the second verse. We must focus on Jesus. Oh, now, now you know where the title came from, fixing our focus. We must focus on Jesus. And if there are any truer words and any clearer words for this day and hour that we live in, I don't know what they are. We must focus on Jesus. I've preached before that the must precedes the miracle. That before a miracle happens, there is always a must. There was always a prerequisite to that miracle becoming a reality. And the must here is that we must focus on Jesus. He is the source and the goal of our faith. He saw the joy ahead of him, so he endured death on the cross and ignored the disgrace it brought him. Then he received the highest position in heaven, the one next to the throne of God. Verse 3, think about Jesus. I, I love verse 2 because it says we must focus on Jesus, and then verse 3 says think about about Jesus. You know, this is a reminder. Okay, so we're focused, but now let's think about what we're focusing on. Come on, somebody, right? Think about Jesus who endured opposition from sinners so that you don't become tired and give up. That's what it's all about. 
We don't want you to get tired, to get exhausted, and to give up. And the writer says, we don't want you to get tired and get exhausted and give up. We want you to continue to focus on Jesus. We want you to continue to think about Jesus because Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. He never changes. He's just the same. The problem is things change, times change, situations change, political climates change, environments change, but the Lord that we serve never changes. He stays the same, always and forever. So I want to talk to you today about having a mindset that is a winning mindset in a defeating time. Because we, we live in a time in which things are upside down, things are topsy-turvy, things are in turmoil, and we've been talking about that quite a bit, obviously. But I want you to have the right mind in the time in which you can have bad thoughts and you can see bad things and hear bad things and negativity and issues and challenges and difficulties, but in the middle of it all, how you can have a winning mindset, even in spite of the circumstances that surround you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 24 said this, you know that many runners enter a race and only one of them wins the prize. And so Paul says in his metaphor, and he's talking about the Christian life, he's talking about the Christian life being like a race, and, and he says, so run to win. And, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about, hey, running to win. Don't let anything distract you or detour you or derail your faith from your divine purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God has a plan and purpose for your future. God has a plan and a purpose for your family. And God's will is is what we want to seek after and what we want to follow after and what we want to run after. But so many things are trying to get us out of focus and so many things are trying to get us to focus on them. But the reality is we need to maintain our focus. We need to fix our focus right now as I'm talking about that John John right now is moving the cameras around as I'm speaking to you. And he's trying to adjust the focus so he can get the best picture of me. And I appreciate that because I need all the help I can get. But he's trying to fix the focus, right? And, and really, that's the way it is for us in our lives, that we need to be fixing our focus. And if we're focused on the wrong thing, or if we have our camera aimed in the wrong direction, we need to make some adjustments. We need to make some spiritual adjustments in our lives. We need to make some mental adjustments in our minds. We need to make some adjustments in our attitudes and in our actions. Why? Because we need to fix our focus. We need to focus our lives on Jesus Christ again. Come on now. Focused on Jesus. What are you focusing on? What is the focus of your life right now? What are you wrapped up on? What do you wake up thinking about in the morning? What, what do you go to bed thinking about and worrying about at night? If you are worrying and if you are stressed and if your mind's going here, there, and everywhere, I can guarantee you you're not focused on Jesus. Just keeping it real, somebody. We need to fix our focus. That is a clarion call to your spirit that you need to whoop, adjust the dials, that you need to adjust the focus, that you need to adjust what's going on in your life because your focus may be off. And it could be off just a little bit or it could be off a whole lot. Don't know. But I do know, as for me and myself, it's like that song we just sang a few minutes ago, you know, I've run to the Father again and again and again and again. Why? Because I can, my life can get out of focus pretty quick. Come on, somebody. Yeah, all of us. Our lives can lose focus really quick. We can, we can you know, 
bump the camera, we can get it out of adjustment, whatever, really quick. And we need to run to the Lord again. We need to turn to the Lord again. We need to look to the Lord again and refocus on him. Used to sing a song, in fact, Carlene and I, back in the day, we used to sing a song, and this is years ago, it's going way back, and that song was running this race with winning on our minds. And that, that was the song, I'm running this race with winning on my mind. And, and so what's on your mind? What is, what is the focal point of your mind? What are you thinking of? Are you running this race to win? Are you running with winning on your mind? Are you running toward Jesus? Are you running with the Lord? Because the, the writer here said, hey, we need to remember this. We need to focus on what? the Lord Jesus Christ. In, in fact, we don't just need to, we must focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? right? There you go. And then the writer said, but if we're going to do that, if we're going to run this race and win this race, there are some things that we need to let go of. <laughs> you know, in, in the Christian life, you're, you're going to find out if you're a new Christian or if you're a veteran Christian, you already know this. But if you're a new Christian, you're going to find out pretty quickly that in, in your Christian experience, there are some things that you're going to need to let go of. Yeah. And there are some other things that you're going to need to pick up. There, there are things that we take up and there are things that we let go of. And there are things that we definitely need to let go of. Why? Because for whatever reason, they just get collected on us, you know? It's, it's like my dogs when they go out in the backyard and they come back in after they've been out in the backyard and, and they've gotten in the bushes and they've gotten in the grass and the weeds and next thing you know, they've got stickers in their coat and they're dragging in stuff that I have to take off of them, things that need to be cleaned off of them. And that's the way it is for us in life, we go through life and boy, just things get on us, right? Yeah. I mean, we, things get attached Then we need to let them go. We need to get them off. We need to lay them aside. We need to clean them out. Get rid of those things. You see, to live victoriously, this Christian life, there are things that you need to lay down and there are things that you need to pick up. The things that we need to lay down are the things that are hindering us, the things that are disturbing us, distracting us, derailing our faith. Those things need to be laid down. They need to be let go. They don't need to be in your life. Come on now. You need to just lay them down, let them go, and move on from them. And so the writer here that we just read in these first three verses of Hebrews chapter number 12, said the first thing you need to let go of is whatever slows you down. That's number one. What do I need to let go of? Hey, whatever's slowing you down, what, whatever's slowing your life down, whatever's slowing your faith down, whatever is hindering you from moving at an optimal level, you need to lay it down. You need to let it go. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 7, watch what Paul said. Paul said, hey, you were running well. He's talking to the Galatians, and the Galatians were having issues. And so he writes to them, and he says, hey, guys, you were running well. What happened? Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You know, you were doing great, and all of a sudden, boom, something happened. What happened? Well, whatever slows you down, you need to let it go. You need to lay it aside. You need to get it off of you. Some things that we need to get off of us. Well, I got that off my back. Well, we need, I got it off my chest. <laughs> we need to get a lot of stuff off that's hanging on. You know, this isn't Star Trek with the Klingons. We need to, we need to get them off. I was telling the, the people that are working here, there, there are more bad jokes to come. So just hang on. And there was one of them right there. Anyway, so the first thing is that you need to let go of whatever slows you down. The second thing you need to let go of is the sin that distracts you. We need to lay aside what? Every weight. We just talked about that. And the sin 
that easily distracts us? Yep, that's what we need to do. The psalmist said in Psalm 19 in verse number 13, he said, keep your servant, and this was his prayer to God. He said, keep your servant from deliberate sins. Keep your servant from these sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. I love that. But Lord, free me from these things that would distract me and that would take me out of the race and that would mess me up and and get me off track and get me out of focus. You see, because that's what it's all about. It's all about what we're focusing on. That focus is so important. It's so important for us to have. The, the, you know what the Bible says about focus? It says this. It says where no vision is. And what does that mean? Where no clarity of vision is. Where there's no clarity, what happens? People perish. And so it's important for us to focus and get things clear and see things the way they truly are and have a clarity of vision. And so we need to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. It's all about focus. And the first thing we do is we need to look or relook to Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, right? The author and the finisher of our faith. Isn't that what we just read? We didn't read that translation. That's a New King James translation. But that's what we just read in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. And so we've got to look or relook or look again and again and again and again to Jesus. Come on now. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse number 17. And this is what the prophet said. He said, I will wait on the Lord and I will look for him. I'm, I'm looking for the Lord. In my, I'm looking for the Lord to show up. You know, you may be looking for this. You may be looking at that. You may be looking for some other thing to happen. Hey, I'm looking for Jesus to show up. I'm looking for Jesus to be high and lifted up. I'm looking for Jesus to do his will and have his way. I'm looking to Jesus so that I can hear his voice, so that I can get some clear directives, so that I can know what I need to do in a difficult hour in a difficult time. I'm not looking to the right. I'm not looking to the left. I'm looking and focusing my attention on Jesus Christ because he is the Lord and he is the, he is the author and the finisher. He's the one that started this. He's the one that created all this and he's the one that's going to finish all this. He's the one that's going to complete all of this. He's the one that's going to wrap all of this mess up. Come on now, somebody. He's the one that's going to fix everything that needs to be fixed. Who's going to fix it? It's not this, that. It's not him, her. It's going to be Jesus. He is our hope. He is our help. And so I'm looking to him, and I'm going to keep looking to him, or I'm going to look to him again, and look to him again, and look to him again. Look to Jesus. That's step number one. Look to the Lord. Secondly, then set your focus on him. Now, a few minutes ago, I was having fun because John John was up here and he was messing with all the cameras. You didn't know that. You didn't see any of that. But while I'm ministering and while I'm sharing, I, that's, that's what I can see is him doing, adjusting the cameras and getting the cameras fixed. Now he didn't know, but, th but that was a part of this message, but it is a part of this message because he was setting things so that the settings would be the best that they can for you to receive what you need to receive via this broadcast. Okay. And so he was fixing the focus. Now, we look to the Lord, right? We look to Jesus. And this is the illustration. We look to Jesus, but sometimes we need to make adjustments. But it's important for us to set our focus on him. We need to make that adjustment, and we need to set our focus on him. And that's the second step. Is, is The first step is we look to him, but the second step is we need to fine-tune our focus. Come on now. 
We need to focus in on Jesus Christ and on what he wants and what his will and what his purpose and what his plan is for our lives. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 2 in your Bible says this, set your minds, watch this, you've got to set your minds, right, on things above, not on on earthly things. And so what does that mean? He's saying, hey, you need to fix your focus. You need to fix your focus on the Lord's work and not the world's work and not what's going on in this world. We, I'm, I'm not saying don't be aware and don't be involved and don't be active and don't be concerned, but I am saying primarily we should be focused on Jesus and what his plan, what his purpose and what his will is for our lives. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That's it. And so in order to do that, we need to, we need to set our minds. And, and that's what a mindset is. And that's how you have a victorious mindset or a Christian mindset is by setting your mind, by, by focusing your mind, by adjusting your mind to where it focuses on Jesus. I know I was dealing with this last night. And, and so before I went to bed, I, I just said, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to pray, and I usually do that before I go to bed, I pray, but I said, I'm, I'm going to focus on the Word of God, and I'm going to focus on what God wants, and so I, I had some scriptures, and I, I flipped on YouTube, and there was a message that I'd been watching from a preacher that I enjoy, and so I said, I want to watch a few minutes of that, and I'm, I just want to get my mind and my spirit focused when I, when I go to sleep tonight you know, before I go to bed. And so when I woke up in the morning, guess what? I woke up with my mind on the Lord. Shocking. But if I would have focused on other stuff before I went to sleep and issues and challenges and obstacles, then when I woke up in the morning, I'd be worried about those things. More likely than not. And so what is it? It's all about setting your mind. You have an opportunity to set your mind, to fine tune your mind, to focus in on the Lord Jesus Christ and have that mindset. So that when you do that, then the third step becomes a reality. You can then live with a Christian mindset and you can live that victorious life, that abundant life that Jesus Christ came to bring. In John 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it how? More abundantly or more and better or more and greater, a better life than you would have otherwise. That's what Jesus Christ came to bring us. But we need to have that mindset. Let the same mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We need to have that mindset. We need to be focused on him. But it all starts, it all starts with with turning our attention back to the Lord. Let me, let me give you this from Romans chapter 8 and verse number 5. This is what Paul said to us Christians. He said, those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now notice that. They set their minds on the things of the flesh. And so if you're, if you're worldly and if you're carnal, then guess what? That's what you're, is going to be on your mind because that's, that's your mindset. But those who live according to the spirit, Paul goes on to say, set their minds on the things of the spirit. Wow. And so they have a spiritual mindset instead of a carnal mindset. Guess which mindset we're supposed to have? A spiritual mindset. Obviously, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ, and that is available for us, but we've got to lay aside that other stuff. We've got to let go of that other stuff. We've got to change the camera angle and get it off of that other junk and focus our attention and fix our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, on his word, on his will, on his ways, on his miracles, on his power, on what he wants, on his plan and purposes for each and every one of our lives. That's what it's all about, somebody. Come on now. And that's the message that I have for you today. That, that's it. It's just fixing your focus. 
so easy for us to get out of focus, so easy for us to get the wrong camera angle, to get the wrong shot, to have the camera aimed in the wrong direction. And we need to do like John John was doing just a couple minutes ago with all these cameras that we have set up here in the studio sanctuary. We need to readjust them. We need to refocus them. We need to get them to where they're supposed to be looking, which is at Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one that's got it all together and all in control, and we need to trust in him. And we need to follow him. And we need to do and be who he wants us to do. Excuse me, what he wants us to do and who he wants us to be. Can I get a witness out there? Oh, come on, don't shout me down. But you know it's true. And uh, this is a good word for somebody today, probably me. <laughs> but, but this is a good word for somebody today. So take it and uh, let it let it help you today. So let's wrap it up today with Hebrews chapter number 10. Let's, let's step back a couple of chapters in Hebrews from where we started this talk. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 35 says this, so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. So hey, don't, don't lose focus. Don't lose faith. That's what he's saying. He's saying, fix your focus, and it's going to reward you. Fix your focus on Jesus, and it's going to help you. Fix your focus on Jesus, and it's going to bless you. Fix your focus on Jesus, and something good is going to happen, and something good is going to come your way because you are looking in the right direction, and you're focused on the right person, the person of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise God. Well, that's what I have for you today. I want to pray for you because I know how easy it is to get out of focus. I know how easy it is to get out of sorts. I know how easy it is to, to let the camera start looking over here or over there or somewhere else, and we just need to reposition and refocus on the Lord Jesus Christ once again, on his power, on his glory, on his might. Let's look to the Lord and see what he can do. Lord, we look to you right now. There is no other that we can look to. You alone are the Lord our God. We look to you because you alone are Savior. You alone are Redeemer. You alone are Deliverer. You alone are our Provider. And Lord, we know that everything, everything in this universe bows before you. Help us to recognize we need to do the same. Help us, Lord God, to run to you again. Help us, Lord, to return to you again. Help us, Lord God, to fix our focus on the things above instead of the things of this life, the things of this world. Lord, help me to maintain my focus in a difficult time, in perilous days. Help me to maintain my focus, Lord, remembering that it's all about you and that it's all about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's all about putting Jesus first in everything that we do. Help me, Lord, to do just that. Help us, Lord, to be who you've called us to be and who you've created us to be. We need your help. And so we run to you again and again and again. And we're so thankful for your grace and for your help and for your strength that we receive right now. Lord, let it flow into our hearts. Let it flow into our minds. Lord, let it flow into the adjustment center, the control center of our lives so that we can focus our lives on you in Jesus' name. And somebody said, amen. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. And I hope and pray that this was a help to you, an encouragement to you, a wake-up call to you, or an opportunity for you to check your adjustments 
And whatever it does, may it bless you in Jesus' name. Hey, I love you. Miss you. So good to see. Hey, those that came out last week, we enjoyed getting to see you. I know a lot of people didn't get the opportunity to come out. So hopefully we'll get to do that again in the near future and have another park meeting. But uh, for those of you that we got to see, it was great to see John Layton and begin and be able to talk to him. Hadn't seen him in seven months can't believe that that's that's like uh, wow but it was great we had great fellowship and a great time and it was great to see each and every one that were there but for those of you that I didn't get to see hey I miss y'all and uh, love you and uh, praying God's best for each and every one of you keep the faith and keep your focus and see what God does because the best is yet to be God is still in control and we're trusting and believing him we'll see you again real soon I love you and appreciate you. God bless you.